Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at a beautiful tool made available by the folks at Node Interactive called Tear Painter. This tool simply allows you to add procedural tears on your fabric by simply using brush strokes. Currently, this is doing a 20% launch offer and for those who like to get this, you can simply go over to the link in the description that bring you right here where you can grab it. And with that said, let's dive directly into Blender and take a look at how this actually works. So with we'll Blender simply open right here, once you download the add-on, all you need to do is go over to edit, go over to preference, go over to where you've got your file path and from there you need to enter the part where the tear painter has been downloaded. Once you've got that, hit the bugger menu, save your preference and close your window. Next thing we need to do is to drag out the new panel and we're going to switch over to the asset browser, click on the drop down within the asset browser and go over to tear painter. Now with the tear painter simply open, you'd notice that we've got one tool five presets and one demo file that we can work with and how this works is extremely easy and once we have this ready we can now click and drag and drop this onto the model now once we drag and drop it you don't see anything because we haven't started doing anything to this model so for us to start you need to first of all pick up a group so this comes with a couple of groups but for you to start painting and getting exactly that way and tear that you want you want to make sure you have yourself a group. So to do that is simple. Select the object, go over to the object data section, click right here and create a simple group. Next thing is to select the object, go over to where we have our properties and then we can click on drop down and select the group. Next thing we need to do is to add noise to the tier and from here we can start doing stuff. So to start painting, you need to switch over to the weight paint mode and you can start doing that lovely painting. So as you simply paint through, you would notice that we are tearing this up. You probably wouldn't see this because we are not rendering. And to see this in render mode is very simple. Let's simply switch over to the render mode and you can start seeing what we are making right here. Let's also go ahead and increase the brush size a bit and we will simply go in and make some more tears like so. And this is basically how you get started with this. So if you like to make some of this stuff, it is as easy as that. And with this here, you can start making some decisions of how you want this to actually look overall. Now with this example out of the way, let's take a look at the demo file that comes with this. So the very first thing which I will say we can do is to make sure that we go over to the object section, go over to the properties, and we're going to simply close all of this. So once we do that, you notice that we've got ourselves something pretty clean. And to start working with this is also this easy. Select the object, click on any of these ones that you want. Say for example, like the raggedy one, what we can do is to click, drag and drop it onto the model. And once we do that, you would notice that we now have all of these butterflies around it. And this looks really cool. But then we don't want these butterflies all over this part. So what we can do is very simple. So first off, let's start with the tearing and then we're going to progressively talk about the other groups. So if we click down here, you would notice that we've got two groups that have been defined for this object previously. So we're going to simply select the first group and you would notice that this is what we've got. And if we simply select the second group, you'd also notice that this is what we've got. So let's simply keep the first one as it is, as that group is what has been used to actually define this stuff. And we can go all the way down to where we've got the butterflies and we can simply select the second group just to clean up those edges. Now, for those who would like to even clean up more edges, you can simply go over to the object data properties. And if you simply have this group selected and switch over to the vertex paint, you can now paint things in and also paint things out. Say, for example, you like to get rid of the groups from here. You can also go ahead and paint those out and those will totally go away. And the same thing can be done for some parts like this. We can paint those parts out and we can also do the same here and paint this part out as well. If you'd like to bring back some of these on the top section, we can also go ahead and do it. So let's reduce the brush size and we can come through and paint some of this right in. And we can also go ahead and paint some of this right back in. And this is how easy it is for you to start working with it. If you like to flip to the previous group, which we already looked at, and probably you want to make some paintings with that, you can also go ahead and do that as well. But what if you would want to make various kind of tiers on top of a particular model? And this is also something I think can come in pretty handy. So for that, what we're going to do is to make sure that we have this object selected and I'm going to create a new group. Now this group, we would probably just name this as new as this is the world we want to keep. And we're also going to go in and find any of these ones. Probably would like to use this. Click, drag and drop it onto 
to the object, which is what we've got here. And we can go over to the properties, go all the way down. So let's go all the way down to the default, which is this one. And we can simply select new. And once we select new, nothing happens. Let's actually go ahead and turn this off so that we can focus on this. So once we have that, I'm simply going to turn this on, have this object selected, go all the way to the weight paint, increase the weight, and we can start painting. So as much as we paint, you would notice that we're getting those tears in. So we can go in and paint some more parts like this, and we can start making some very interesting decisions with it. So with that done, if we simply switch all the way back, you would now notice that we have that, and we have these. So you can layer as many of these things as possible and you can choose to control them how you want them to be controlled. It is also worth mentioning that because this works with vectors grouping, you can actually use the vectors grouping on some other parts as well. And in situations where you like to play with some of the parameters, say for example, you would want the weave to have a little bit of a push in and a push out, you can simply go ahead and do all of that. And in situations where you like to play with some angling of the weave, you can do that. For the force, they also got some interesting things, which includes the length. So you can increase the length of the force. You can also push the force to different directions if this is something you're interested in doing. And you can also play with the colors depending on what you're trying to create at a given time. So this is it. For those who like to take a look at this, or probably you like to grab it, you can simply go over to the link in the description where you can check this out. This comes with features that you can work with. And we've just simply talked about the very basic stuff that you can start doing with it. It's also worth mentioning that this is currently doing a launch offer, which is offering a 20% discount for those who would like to get it. It is pretty new, it has all of the cool features that you might want, and it is one of those amazing tools that you might be needing if you would like to add some personality to the fabric that you're creating. The folks at Node Interactive are also the creators of the Retopo planes, the Scope Bridge tool, Wrapmaster, and so on. And for those who are looking for even more stuff that they can work with, you can simply take advantage of the Humble Bundle sale, which is running out. So we already talked about this one previously. The Blender Market Essential Game Model Toolkit, which comes with tons of add-ons and also asset, is running out, and you've got a few hours to claim all of this. This is currently valued for 8,426.86 euros, but with 32.95 or 27.95, you will be able to get all all of these add-ons. There are tons of other cool add-ons that are also in the description, so do well to check them out. So this is it, a huge shout out to the folks at Node Interactive for making this possible. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.